Investing. All right, here we go. 365 Sports. Baylor tomorrow. National signing day for everybody. And, of course, in two days, the bowl game in Fort Worth. We're joined by Baylor Director of Athletics, Mac Rhodes. Mac, uh, we were bringing this up. Uh, the coaches get extensions. You had one, of course, with Dave Aranda. You had one that you signed with Matt Rule, among others. My question is, what is the give and take when you pay a coach in these days millions? And then on top of that, there are bonus structures or kick-ins as well. Is that just part of the business? Because aren't they getting paid to reach those specific bonus structures in the first place? Yeah, you know, it's a, it's a great question. And um, I, I think, you know, you answered the question your, your, yourself. You know, that's just typical um, of the world that we, we live in, right? You have you uh you know you have your your contract and you've got what i would reference as guaranteed money you know and and that's handled different ways you know depending upon the the institution that can be just all base salary that can be base salary plus money's earned for you know external things tv radio etc but you've got the the guaranteed you know money that that uh that you pay them annually and then you know there's a there's a performance, you know, incentive bonus on, on top of that, right. For reaching, you know, certain, you know, milestones. And, um, you know, I think where I get frustrated, uh, with, with some of it is, you know, what's, what's that, that lower threshold and, you know, should we be paying any, any bonus money if, if you, if you win six games, for example, et cetera, versus, versus 10, 11, 12. And so, you know, without, you know, going into specifics, um, you know, I would say that we've been really, really thoughtful about how we do the performance, you know, bonus incentive. And is that, you know, are those, those things, you know, truly have to be things that are, that are moving the, the, the program forward and, you know, doesn't just make us, make us average, you know, um, so to speak. So I don't know if that answers your question, but, um, you know, across the country, you know, everybody's got guaranteed money and, and then the performance incentive money. Yeah, Mac, it's uh, it's not a system that you can really just go and be a trailblazer and try to fight, is it? You kind of have to find your best way through it. Well, it's, it's not unless you, you know, don't want to have, have the opportunity to, you know, hire some of the best coaches, you know, in the country because, you know, that's the marketplace. That's what you're competing against. You know, you're, you're dealing, you're working with agents. Um, and by the way, you know, um, the agents, like they know everybody else's contract across the country except for private schools. You know, there's the, the, the Freedom of Information Act. They all have at their fingertips what everybody else is making, how many years, what's, what's the buyout, what's the termination without cause provisions, um, you know, what's the performance incentive, you know, what can they, they earn in performance incentives annually. And, again, those are, those are one-time annual. So they, they have all of that data at their fingertips now 10 years ago you know uh 15 years ago that wasn't that wasn't the case um and so when you when you're working with with a with a head coach uh, on his or her contract and and with agents you know you're you're fighting all of that right so it's just it's it's part of the business and and uh and the world we uh we live in so, Mac, uh, not much going on this week, huh? Uh, I mean, if your football team got signing day tomorrow and then the bowl game right after. What do you make of, of just the timing of the calendar and how all that's kind of worked out? You know, it's uh, it's interesting, Craig, that you asked that because I was on a football NCAA football oversight committee, you know, call today. And, um, you know, I actually mentioned, you know, we, we've talked about it before, um, and, uh, but I think we need to talk about it again, just the whole timing of, of everything. And, you know, is this the right time to have the early signing period? And, 
you know, you think about playing in a bowl game and, and even particularly a, a bowl game pre-Christmas, you know, you're almost at a disadvantage because you're trying to, you know, practice, prepare, you know, all of those things. And right in the middle of it, you're having to have conversations, you know, um, now we're in, we're in a dead period that, that just began, but, but leading up to it, you know, trying to solidify your, your class and make sure that, that all of that's going well. And by the way, what's really made this difficult is, you know, we're in the middle of the, the transfer portal window and, um, you know, we've been fortunate at, at Baylor where, you know, we've, we've had, you know, less than a handful, you know, enter the portal and transfer out, but we've got you know, programs just in our own conference that, um, you know, have are up in the 14, 15 range. You know, there's, there's, you know, some teams, at least one team I, I know for sure of in the SEC that's lost 20 to the portal. I think the high, we were looking at data today, the high is um, 24, that there's a program in, in, the, in the country at the, at the FBS level. You know, right now the average is about nine and a half uh, that are that are going per per program that are going into the portal. Last year it was in the sevens, so it's it's gone up. And so this is a, a huge reality. And man, we're asking our coaches, you know, to to navigate a ton of it. And then not to mention, you know, what happens if you have staff changes? And so we've got a head coach that's trying to manage all of that, right? And and be the defense coordinator at the same time. So it's a lot, and I just think we've got to rethink all of this. Yeah, Mac, I would think that, you know, like you mentioned the early signing period. We've talked about it a couple of times. Like, moving into January seems like, well, you might as well just have the old one back in February because you're, you know, you're only saving yourselves a couple of weeks by then, especially if you're pushing it out to, you know, after most of the bowl games are over uh, so the coaches have time to – to kind of reset that, I would think that if you really wanted to do it where it was any way effective with portal and everything else, you'd have to drastically change when it was all together. Um, you know, maybe a place it's never been, right? Yeah, there's a lot of cause and effect, right? Tug and pull and, and, and looking at the totality of it. And I think that's what's hard. You know, we end up doing a lot of one-off stuff. And uh, I think the one-off stuff and – and the quick fixes are, are needed for, for example, um, you know, the, the idea of uh, 56 official visits is what you get, you know, per year. Um, now, all of a sudden, we're, we're thinking about, you know, a one-time waiver, emergency waiver, because, you know, we've got, again, there's programs throughout the country, you know, that, that have a, a large number of, of folks, Going into the going into the transfer portal, I mentioned the 9.5. You know what happens when you have coaching changes? How does that impact? And so, you know, Paul, looking at the the whole totality of it is is where I think we we need to we need to go. And and you know we are doing that to some extent, but I think we need to include the uh, the, the signing periods. And you know, there's. You know, I hear, well, the AFCA, the, 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 the coaches convention is in January, so we can't do it. Well, then let's move the dang coaches convention, right? <laughs> so let's get it right for, for our football programs. Let's get it right for our football student athletes first and then worry about, worry about everything else. Mac, why wait until it's like reactive and not be proactive? The NIL, the portal, the new signing period, which I thought was a great idea. Then all of a sudden, now that's even part of the mess in a way. Coach is leaving early because of the new early signing date. Is it easier said than done? It's easier said than done. And, and, and you know, look, that's, that's the logical question. And so, you know, you're asking the right question. Um, but I think the – I don't know any other way to say it. And I don't mean this to be, you know, negative, but I just think the, the bureaucracy, the, 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 the structure of the NCAA, like we've got to find a way to, to, to handle real, real issues in real time and, and be able to even be proactive and, and, and handle them, you know, uh, as, as best we can be before they come become problems, etc. 
now everybody's competitive and so everybody's trying to find a, an edge and a loophole and so it's hard to sit there and predict everything and run every ground ball out but you know I, I think it's it's um you know with with the new NCAA president you know I, I think there's going to need to be a deep deep dive on how the NCAA you know um uh, conduct its business operationally and um we're we're um i don't know i think it's antiquated and uh we we need to get much much better um better at doing it so yesterday evening jeff trailer at utsa this morning mac brown at north carolina brought up and basically posted on their twitter feeds tampering that players are being tampered with or poached or whatever or trying to be poached why wouldn't it – would it be coaching suicide if, for example, somebody contacted a player at college X, Y, or Z and you put the text or Instagram or whatever it is up online? Yeah, I mean, that's a that's a good – you know, I, I think that's a fair co- comment. And Why don't we do that? Why don't we expose? And, you know, I, I think there's probably this, this un, unwritten rule amongst – amongst coaches and then I think you know there's also you know proving it you know 100% fact um but it's got to stop like I, I'm telling you this we we had players contacted you know some of our players being contacted before the season was even over and so you know if we think you know it's it it happens not until the season is completed <laughs> the, the last regular season game and you know i, I i'm gonna say it I, I think it's i think you know um a school or two w- within our league has and so it absolutely has has to stop and i will i will tell you this and i can say this you know proudly but you know you start to begin to think are we just at a great great disadvantage because we we are committed to doing it the right way and I can tell you this, Baylor's not tampering. Baylor's not, you know, calling, um, you know, and and wanting to see if, if players are willing to, to transfer to our place. And we're not doing it through a third party in a roundabout way, et cetera. And so, you know, I, I am proud of, of Coach Aranda and our staff, the way we're handling it. But those that aren't handling it right, it, it needs to be stopped. If you found a coach do that, would he be done? Yes. Mac Rhodes, Baylor Director of Athletics, with us on 365 Sports. Mac, also given the rules, and, I, and this might be me being naive here, it seems like a slightly unnecessary crime in a lot of respects in that players that are unhappy and want to leave can just get in the portal. You know, they, they and they have the time to – I know you're trying to get the edge and all that, but it seems to me that there's – a calendar for that set up for that specific reason, it would seem to be kind of a silly thing to do and get in trouble for, I guess they're doing it right now because what's going to happen to them other than an AD like you stepping up and, and firing somebody like that. Yeah. So again, Paul goes to what's the threshold, right? Well, the threshold is, well, whatever we can get away with. And that's unfortunate. And so as long as you're, you're able to get away with it, right? People are going to continue to do it if it's if it's a competitive edge and you know that's that's the world that we're we're living in and um you know when we talk about continuing to be nationally relevant you know meaning baylor and uh you know that's those are the conversations we we were having it's it's certainly you know name image and likeness and and all of that but it's you know doing things the right way and um you know um what what kind of competitive disadvantage are you when you when you when you you know do it the right way and um, and again that's where you know it comes back to um, we're gonna work our tails off we're we're gonna have to work harder um, smarter when we think about doing it the right way and and then you know I certainly believe that that God's gonna honor that and and I think of to this point in time. You know, it's uh, it's it's worked for us, and you know, I I know it's it's frustrating for for our coaches, and it's certainly frustrating for me. But um, 
we're gonna we're gonna commit to, to doing it the right way and, and continue to do it that way. Mac, after the football won the Big Twelve title in Sugar Bowl, do you feel like in a year's time, because you're about to be National Signing Day a year later, and that was right after the Big Twelve title, do you feel like the football program got all the juice it could out of what they did a year ago. Um. Yeah. That's a that's a really fair question, and you know, I'm I'm not sure, Smoke, if if you're headed in the in the direction of of you know where the where the class will end up being ranked. Um. You know, in terms of the recruiting class, et cetera. You know, I, I think if we, we hold on to the class, this is going to be one of the, the better classes that that's ever been signed in, in, you know, in Baylor history. But, you know, it, it goes way deeper than that. Um, and particularly in the in the world that we're living in, you know. Um, so so answering your question, I would say yes, um, particularly when we think about are we are we getting the you know the young men that that we want um not just not just you know the 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 stars beside their names but do they absolutely love playing football because that's such a big part of it nowadays with all of the distractions um you know are we are we getting them in that just they they just have this deep love and passion you know do they do they fit you know, in terms of our, our culture and our, and our Christian values and, and, and all of that. And so I would just say that, you know, um, the sugar bowl and that success has, has probably, you know, opened the door where we maybe have more of those type of, of young men to, to choose from. And, um, and so we, we've been, you know, we're going to continue to be selective and, and, and careful. So, so yeah, you know, I, I, to, to answer your question, I, I think I really do think we we have when you think about facilities and being able to move forward with like the football operations building and and some of those other things. Um, absolutely, yes. So uh, I I know that there's the story, and in fact we discussed it with you before, but the the possibility that Texas and Oklahoma may depart after 2023 season or 23 24, whenever that is. Um, is that is what's because we thought, and I think you've mentioned it, Brett, your mark mentioned it. Others have mentioned that the big 12 football schedule for next year would be out by now. And it wasn't, it, is that what has delayed it because of the unknown of maybe just a one year deal? And then they will shred that up and start all over again or what? Yeah. So I'm not going to be disingenuous. You know, I don't know that it's been publicly confirmed, et cetera. So, you know, um, but there's there's certainly, you know, logically, um, I don't think it's a I don't think it's a stretch to connect those dots, and and I would just I would just leave it at that. All right, well that makes sense because you'd have to tear it up, and instead of a, let's say you're at, for example, X, Y, and Z, and then they come to your place the next year, they may not be in the conference to come to your place, or vice versa. So that that would make sense. Um, Mac, we appreciate it. Uh, you have, as everyone else in the athletic department, I know that tomorrow they start to get signatures. The support staff and all that's involved in it, how much of an all-out everybody ha- on board, even with the bowl game in Fort Worth, do you have? Because I remember one year maybe that wasn't the case and you weren't real thrilled with that. Yeah, I, I think that um, you know our staff has been tremendous and just all of the time and the effort and um, – you know, it, it goes way beyond, you know, just the, the football staff, what our facilities people do to make sure that, that everything is pristine when we're having official visits and all of the, the other staff members, the academics, the character formation, you know, the, the sports ministry, you know, all of those folks that, that are involved in, in official visits. And so it, it is a, a true team effort. And, uh, you know, I'm proud of, of of our staff and, and how, you know, everybody's handled it. And, um, you know, I think tomorrow will be a really positive day for our, for our football program. And, you know, it's always exciting, you know, whether it's football or any one of our other 18 sport programs, 
when you when you add new members uh, to your to your family. And uh, you know, I'm excited for for our staff. I'm excited for for those young men tomorrow and their families um, because it's a it's a big commitment. And uh, the the one thing that um, that I can promise those young uh, those young men that, that sign a, a, a national letter of intent tomorrow is we're gonna we're gonna care for them we're gonna value them as as people first and we're gonna challenge them to be great in everything uh, not just football. One final thing. The schedule that's not being released because of whatever is going on behind the scenes with the possibility of what happens with Texas and OU. You didn't say that. I will. When does it have to be released so you guys as programs can start to put together schedules of, like, games and homecoming and whatever else is involved in that? Um, so, it's you know, uh, it's a great question. And I just don't see how we can go any, any longer than, than mid-January. That, that's, that's my personal opinion. That's not, you know, anybody else's. But, yeah, I, I just, in fairness to everybody, um, I, I don't see how it, can, how it can go beyond that. So, In fairness to everybody ought to be a slogan when the new conference is formed. <laughs> I like it. Thank I you. Like it. Thank you, Mac. We'll see you in Fort hey. Worth. Hey, uh, just quickly, Merry Christmas to, to you guys and your families, and thank you for everything you do. And then just, you know, Merry Christmas to, to the all of the Baylor family. Um, just wishing everyone a, a blessed Christmas season. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Mac. Thanks, Mac, Mac. Mac Rhodes, Director of Athletics at Baylor. We got a lot of things to chew on with that.